not saved. Salvation is only through Paul. You are not saved. Salvation is only through Paul. We today are under Paul's ministry. Not under Peter's ministry. Not under Jesus' ministry. Not under Jesus' ministry. Not under Jesus' ministry. You are not saved. Salvation is only through Paul. Um, another thing about this verse is what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, he that does not endure will not be saved. It doesn't say that. Um, very simple. This is baby doctrine. <laughs> baby doctrine. <laughs> but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So I, I just think he's just admonishing them. He's saying, if you endure all this stuff, you're doing it for a good cause. You are going to be, you're going to have everlasting life. You know, until the end. It could be, you know, until the end of the person's life. Endure. And it doesn't say that he does not who does not endure will not be saved. Well, how can someone not endure and still be saved? Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe they, they backslide, they start to take vengeance and stuff like God doesn't want them to. You know, maybe possibly they attempt suicide or something. Maybe commit suicide and they're still saved. That's it. Very simple, really. Revelation 14, starting in verse 9. It says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire that brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Verse 12, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So, that means that there must be a commandment to, or a command to not take the mark. What's the definition of a command? Uh, to give an authoritative order. Now, I came across something today. I think it's a pretty good resource. It's a thousand and fifty New Testament commands. A thousand and fifty New Testament commands. It might be extensive. Every Maybe every command in the New Testament. I don't know. That's a lot of them. A thousand and fifty. And throughout this whole thing, never once is there a command not to take the mark of the beast. Nothing about the mark of the beast is mentioned in this. There is not a command to not take the mark of the beast. I mean, here's an example of a command. Abstain from idols. Abstain from fornication. You see, that's a direct command to do something. A, a command is telling someone to do something or to not do something. So if there was a command to not take the mark, an example would be, take not the mark of the beast. Take not the mark of the beast. Do we see that anywhere in Scripture? No, we absolutely do not. Well, he'll say, well, verse 9 and 10, it says, you know, whoever takes the mark of the beast, they're going to go to hell. So if a saved person takes the mark of the beast, they got to go to hell. Well, you know, there's hundreds of verses in the Bible that says whoever believes on Jesus will never perish. So I'm going to take those promises of God, and I'm going to trust those promises of God, and I'm going to look at this and say, well, then the, 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 there are no commands to not take the mark. If we were, if Christians were, or if, you know, if tribulation saints weren't to take the mark, there would be a command. It would say, take not the mark of the beast. It doesn't. Simply, you know, there's nothing that anyone who is saved can ever do to lose salvation. Not one sin, not one big sin, not a million sins will not send somebody to hell. You know, it's... Once you're secure, you're secure. That's just what the Bible teaches. It's very simple. This is baby doctrine. <laughs> baby doctrine. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance... But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees, 
Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And you can have this fire. Would you like to be inside of that fire? It's going to be so amazing. And so if you seek the Lord for this baptism with fire, you can have it and start proclaiming it. Do you want this fire in your life? Because if you want the fire, you can have the fire. How? It says, well, the Lord that you seek, if you seek him for the fire, he will give you the fire. The baptism with fire is going to come to you. The baptism with fire is going to come to you. As it is my tradition, I want to invite you to have a word of prayer with me this evening. And I want to encourage you to do two things. Some of you already know what they are. Number one, please pray for yourself. Brothers and sisters, I have nothing that I can offer you that will be of any benefit to you. And I'm not just saying this, I believe that. The Bible says in the last days, what will happen? Men shall be lovers of themselves. Number one, please pray for yourself. What is the new law in Christ? Does it cancel the old law? That's another thing we need to find out. We're going to find out that it does cancel the old law. We're going to find out that it does cancel the old law. That we're that we have a there's a lot of confusion about this, but we're still seeking answers on some of it. I don't have all the answers. What I'm trying to get you to understand right now is the new covenant versus the old covenant. But we're still seeking answers on some of it. I don't have all the answers. We're going to find out that it does cancel the old law. What I'm trying to get you to understand right now is the new covenant versus the old covenant. But we're still seeking answers on some of it. I don't have all the answers. Be prepared. The one word that just kept coming back to me from a selfish standpoint was, Lori, if you don't do this for any anybody else, do it for your five children that were aborted and are in heaven. I'm, I'm, I'm staying alive, staying alive. Yeah. We are in the final day. Wow. We are in the last day. That's right. You know, what's wrong with stacking some food away? It's delicious. It's tasty. It's seasoned just right. It's not over seasoned. It's not under seasoned. Get your food. Start ordering food. This food is the Cadillac of food. It truly is. This is the best food. Yes. It's pancakes. It's yes. pizza. <laughs> Jesus said there's coming a time when there will be no food to eat. That's right. Am I a fool? Yes. Am I a fool? Yes. I've begun That's right. the time of trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Be prepared. Yo, this is it. it. This it is, is it. It is. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm staying alive. We are going to be looking at what scripture has to tell us about our heavenly mother, our heavenly mother, our heavenly mother. If you still insist that the Holy Spirit is male, then you are propagating a lie about the very nature of God. Today, I'm going to be doing a message that I didn't anticipate that I would ever do. Quite frankly, it wasn't something that was in my plans at all. Um, but the Holy Spirit has his own plans, and I'm bound to operate according to his plans and to his plans and not to his plans and not mine. And see, the scary thing about being deceived, you guys, is that when you are deceived, you don't know that you're deceived. If we choose to try to preach his word, to try to preach his gospel in our own words, in words of human wisdom, the result is going to be damage. The result is going to be that the cross will be emptied of its power. So let us go out. Let us be living epistles. Let us preach the word of God, both in our words and in our actions. And until I see you next time, let us preach the word of God, both in our words and in our actions. And until I see you next time. The purpose of this lesson will be to demonstrate from the Bible how and when the rapture will take place in relation to other end times event, end time events. It will be a great lesson. So, Father, tonight we want more than knowledge. Tonight we want more than information. 
One will be taken, the other will be left. How many have heard that before? That's what the whole title of the series comes from. Left behind. And you want to be taken because the wicked are going to be left and suddenly whisked away. Right, okay. I'm going to show you something fascinating. You do not want to be taken. If you believe the Bible, you don't want to be the ones that are taken away. Jesus basically says, I want to live with you for eternity. And so the reason of the second coming, the why of it all, is so that he can take us to live with him forever. Can someone say amen? Jesus says, one will be taken, one will be left. One will be taken, the other will be left. One will be taken, the other will be left. Where, Lord? Where are they taken? They're taken to destruction where the eagles will eat their bodies. Now, let me ask you a question. Based on the Bible, on the what, everyone? Bible. You want to be taken or left? Bible. You want to be left, beloved. Is it going to be joyful? Amen. It is going to be joyful. Jesus says, I will come again. Beloved, I want to be ready for that day. Amen. How about you? Amen. Jesus will defy the skeptics and return to earth, and I want to be ready. How many of you want to be ready? Mm, let's pray together. And Father, we want to thank you for your mercy and your kindness. We believe that this day cannot be far away. Father, this earth is going crazy. It's out the window. It's coming apart at the seams, upside down, and black is white, and white is black, and it's insanity, oh God. Black is white, and white is black, and it's insanity, oh God. Come home. Uh, come and take us home. Come home. Come and take us home. Come home. Come and take us home. I just pray in tongues and lay hands on them. This is Naran from Egypt, and this is my friend Hajar from Tunisia. And now we will be introducing the Zahruta to you. This is Apostle Laura Lee, and I just feel like talking about this briefly. So what you basically have is a case that an apostle, as I am, I'm of surpassingly great revelation. What that means is if you put it in human language, it means I'm a genius. You prove I'm not Mary. You prove. You prove it. Guess what? You cannot biblically prove that I'm not Mary. You want to know why? Because there's no way you can know that. There's no way you can rule it out biblically. Oh, you prove it. You can't prove that I'm not Mary. There's, there's no sin you can try to accuse me of and go, well, you can't be Mary because you sinned. You did this. You did that. Uh, no, the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. You are being the accuser of the brethren, the slander. How dare you accuse a blood-bought, born-again Christian? And you're going to tell me uh, that it's just impossible. It's just, it's just impossible that I'm Mary reborn. No, you can't prove that. Let me tell you what I've proven. I have proven I'm the end time apostle by the work that I've produced. I have produced the word of God in full power to bring that unity and maturity of the body of Christ. There it is. Proof's in the pudding. There it is. What does that prove to you? That I'm Mary. God bless you.